श्रेष्ठमी पिशुचिपुत्र गजामुरीपुरी माचुरी गोस्तुआतीकुंद गिरीवर अहोराधिका भारस पतित कृपया श्री गुरु तम नोस्म गौरव गौरचंद्रा राधिका तदारे कृष्णा कृष्णभक्ताय तद्वक्ताय नमो नम आनंदलीलमाय विग्रहाय हेम बद्यव्य सुंदराय तस्म महाप्रेमस प्रदाय चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नम चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नम चैतन्य चंद्राय नमो नम भक्तिया स्मरली मनोहरा राधिक सुख मम कृप निधे स्वप्रिय चरण की वैवस्मी तैवस्मी नजवा तया बिना देवी तम नरण फर्स्ट वो I offer my sastang bhagavat puspanjali my heart like flowers thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master my supremely worshipful spiritual guru dev nitilila purishtam vishnu pad ashto darasat sishma drupanuga charivarya shila bhakti vedanta narayan goswami maharaj shila guru dev ki jai secondly i offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my param guru dev to shila prabhupad and all of our sri rupanuga gaudiya guru parampara and finally i offer my pranam to all the assembled vaishnavas and vaishnavis vanch kal puru dashta vi rupas vi rupas vi rupas vi rupas hari 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 perhaps you know that all the vedic scriptures explain yasya devi para bhakti yatha devi tatha garo tasya iti katitha yatha prakshanti mahatmana that if a person is as dedicated to their spiritual master as they are dedicated to god then only for that person are all the mysteries the profound Uh, confidential secrets of the Vedas automatically revealed within the heart of that person. Sri Krishna said, "Ye me bhakta jana pata, na me bhaktas tachet te jana." If someone said, "I am a devotee of Krishna," 
then Krishna said, I don't accept that person. But if someone says, I am the devotee of Krishna's devotee, hmm, then hmm, Krishna, he accepts them. Hmm. So, to teach this example to the whole world, even when the avatars of the Supreme Lord come to this world, they accept the Guru and serve their Guru Dev like a very menial servant. Even Krishna himself, to teach us this example. When I want to tell some history from the life of Krishna, which illustrates how one should be devoted to the spiritual master, and may also give a, a glimpse into the heart of very beautiful, sweet mm, Akila Rasamrita Murti Sri Krishna. You see, when Krishna was about up to the age of about uh, 10 years and uh, 8 months, Sri Krishna performed his beautiful pastimes in the uh, dairy farm, in the very beautiful rural hamlet of the Braja, staying in Nandagaon with his father Nanda Maharaj and Yashodamaya and all the cows and coward boys. There he discovered very beautiful Sringaras, the romantic mellows of love with Shimati Radhika and the gopis of Braja. But Akrura, one day Akrura came to Braja and persuaded Krishna and Balan to come with him to help uh, the Yadu dynasty who were uh, suffering terrible atrocities at the hands of the evil king Kamsa Maharaj. He had usurped the throne of Mathura and he had put Basudev and Devaki in jail. He was uh, torturing them. He was, when, whenever Devaki gave birth to a child, he would kill a newborn child. So they were suffering so much. And actually Krishna being in Vrindavan was absorbed in the mellows of Vrindavan. He never thought about anything else. He was only enjoying praying in Vrindavan. Hmm. So on Krishna's last day, perhaps you know that Kamsa Maharaj has sent a demon named Keshi. Hmm? So, <coughs> Kamsa Maharaj said, I want to send you to Vrindavan and kill this uh, child, Krishna because there's a prophecy that he will kill me so I should kill him first so then Keshi said how can I recognize this Krishna he said it's very easy to recognize him he has a peacock feather in his hair he wears yellow cloth over his shoulders and he plays a flute so then Keshi from Maturi set out on his mission to Brindava in the meantime Madhu Mangal came to Krishna and said Krishna I am a Brahmin and you are a coward boy. Huh? I am a senior to you in status and in society, but everyone respects you more than me. Everyone loves you more than me. Everyone gives you so many sweets, they don't give so much to me. I think I know the reason. It's because you wear this peacock feather and play this flute and wear this pitambra. Huh? <laughs> then Krishna is very kind. He said, Madhu Manga, huh? if you think this is the reason, then I'll give them to you. You can have them. And Krishna <laughs> took off his peacock feather and put it on the head of Madhu Mangal, gave his pitamba and his flute. Now Madhu Mangal was very happy. Oh, now all will respect me. <laughs> and he went for a walk in the forest. In the meantime, Keshi came in the form of a huge, powerful horse. Hmm? And when he saw Madhu Mangal, he said, Look, they, uh, I just arrived here and Krishna's right there. So Keshi turned around and tried to kick him with his hind legs. But actually Keshi didn't even kick Madhu Mangal. He missed. But only the wind coming from the kick made Madhu Mangal go gamboling over and fell flat in the bushes. So then Keshi thought that was easy. I came to kill Krishna. I finished him so easy. Now let me uh, have some fun by terrorizing the rest of Braja. That was his big mistake. Mm -hmm. yeah? So then he, when he went to terrorize the rest of Braj, so then Krishna came. And as you know the history, Krishna killed Keshi. After Keshi had died, Srimad Bhagavatam describes that Narad Muni was wandering there through the forest of Vrindavan and he approached Krishna. And he offered prayers to Krishna. Hmm? He said, Oh Krishna, whenever Dharma is going down, 
religion is going down and irreligion sinful activities are going up in the world at that time you descend to this world to establish religion to deliver the saints and to annihilate the demons and to establish religious principles you appear again and again as Krishna himself has said in Bhagavad Gita so many people take it that Narad Muni was offering prayers to Krishna and glorifying him but this was not the purpose of Narad Narad knows all these things that he's saying and Krishna knows all these things what was the point? the point was this that though Krishna in Bhagavad Gita said yada yada hi dharmasya gani bhavati bharata dhuta namadamasya tadatmanam sardamiham I descend when religion, irreligion is rising and I establish religion but when Krishna actually descended and appeared in Vrindavan he was having such a wonderful time he was so intoxicated with the preem of the bridge buses that he totally forgotten about why he came completely forgotten <laughs> and if Narada hadn't come on that day to remind him then Krishna would have stayed in Vrindavan forever and never gone to Mathura to destroy the demons and establish the Dharma in the world so Narada had come to remind Krishna don't think that the residents of Vrindavan are all uh, enchanted by Krishna's beauty and sweetness uh, though it's true but more significantly it is Krishna himself who is enchanted in complete forgetfulness by the beautiful sweet qualities and the love of the Brijabhasis mm. mm -hmm. when Lord Brahma offered prayer to Krishna Krishna was not impressed he didn't even look at him so then Brahma thought oh it's because I have not glorified his loved ones Oh Bhagyam, Oh Bhagyam, Nanda Gopar Bhajokasam, Yanmi Tram Paramanandam Purna Brahma Sanatanam. How glorious, how glorious is Nanda Maharaj and Madhya Shoda and all the coward boys and residents of Brahma. So Brahmaji began to glorify his associates because he realized actually how do we get to Krishna's heart? Hmm. How do we persuade him to pay attention to us and give us mercy? Huh? Krishna loves his devotees. So become the servant of the servant, Das Anu Das, of Sri Krishna, the servant of the servant of Sri Krishna. And this is the way Krishna's, we cause Krishna's heart to melt and His mercy flows to us. So Krishna killed uh, Keshi on that day and that very evening Akrura arrived mm -hmm. in Vrindavan. So Akrura, he persuaded, he could, Krishna didn't want to go, but he persuaded Balaram because Balaram's actual father is Vasudev. And when Krishna saw that Balaram wanted to go to Mathura to solve this problem, then Krishna, he's very close to Balaram, so he agreed. The two brothers, they always stay together. So Akrura, Akrura took Krishna from Vrindavan. All bridge buses were broken hearted. Nanda Maharaj and some cowboys went with him. But after Krishna killed Kamsa, then uh, the Krishna told Nanda Maharaj and the cowboys to go back to Braj and said, I'll return. Just let me satisfy Vasudev and Devaki. Because Balaram is the son of Vasudev. And he was thinking, he's now seeing his son for the first time in his life because he was born Balaram was born in, in Nanda Goko, in Mahavan. So Vasudev Maharaj is seeing his son Balaram for the first time in his life. And if after one day Krishna will just take him back to Braj, it will break his heart. On the other hand, Krishna can't leave Balaram there and go back by himself. So Krishna is always, the, he's the humble one. And he takes the difficult position because of the love of his devotees. So he told Nanda Maharaj, Balaram has to stay here. Let me stay here with Balaram and after some time, I'll come back to Vrindavan. So, Nanda Maharaj returned back to Vrindavan and now Krishna is in Mathura. But, no one in Mathura believes that Krishna is the son of Nanda and Yashoda. No one believes he's a Gopa, that he's a coward boy. They all think he's the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. Why? Because they were there on that day in the arena, you know, big arena, the Rangashala of Mathura, like the Super Bowl. Thousands of people were there for the wrestling match. Oh, I yeah. and Chanura. Yes, Chanura and Mustika. <laughs> and they saw with their own eyes how Krishna, by the hair, he threw Kamsa to the ground and beat him and Kamsa died. And then they remembered that 
uh, almost 11 years earlier, the Devatas in an aerial voice had announced, Asyaste astamo kabo, hanto yamba te buddha. O Kamsa Maharaj, that person whose chariot you are driving, Devaki, her eighth child will kill you. Mm. And so when they all saw, everyone in that stadium saw with their own eyes, Krishna so kill Kamsa Maharaj, then they realized, that's the eighth child of Devaki. It must be the eighth child. So everyone was convinced, Krishna is not son of Nanda and Yashoda, he is not a coward boy. Only he grew up like that, he was in hiding there. Because of Kamsa Maharaj. But now he's grown up. He came and killed that person who was torturing his parents. And now he has to live the life of a Katriya, not a coward boy. So, Basudev and Devaki, they were thinking. Now Krishna is 10 years old. And you see, in different castes, when the boys get to a certain age, then they receive the sacred thread. They receive the sacred thread and the Brahma Gayatri. And after that, they can go to Gurukul and learn about the Vedas. So, Sudras, that doesn't apply <coughs> like to Sudras, but um, Brahmanas, Kattriyas and Vaishyas all undergo the Savitra Janma, the sacred thread ceremony, the birth by initiation. So, for the, for the Brahmanas, the boys undergo this at the age of eight. For the Kattriyas, they undergo at the age of 10. And for the, the Vaishyas, the Gopakas, they undergo this at the age of 12. You see? So Krishna being in Vrindavan, he wasn't old enough to have the sacred thread. But now he come to Mathura. And in Mathura, everyone says, you are Kattriya. So it's time he has to take the sacred thread. Huh? And it should be arranged by his father. So now Vasudev is thinking, he's my son. He's my son. So I should arrange for his initiation ceremony. So then he thought, I'll arrange the initiation ceremony for Krishna and for Balaram. But one thing is there. That is that your mother and father should be there at the initiation, the sacred thread ceremony. Mother and father should be present. You see? But where Bosudev and Devi in Mathura, where's Balaram's mother? In Vrindavan. Rohini is in Vrindavan. Right? Balaram's mother is in Vrindavan. Because Vasudev Maharaj had sent her there so that Kamsa Maharaj couldn't imprison her or kill her children. When she got pregnant, he sent her to hide in Gokul. <laughs> so then Vasudev Maharaj thought, I have to write a letter, send it to Braj, and call Rohini to come and be here, and then I can arrange for the uh, uh, Savitra Janma the Brahmin thread ceremony, the sacred thread ceremony of Krishna and Balaram. So Basudev wrote a letter and he sent it with a messenger to uh, Vrindavan. So then the message came. And the, the younger brothers of Nanda Maharaj, they read the message. It was addressed to Nanda and, Su, Nanda and Sunanda, the younger brothers of Nanda Maharaj. Basudev Maharaj wrote, I did not think of this before when Nanda Maharaj was leaving. But now it's come to my mind that my wife, Rohini, my sec uh, second wife, Rohini, she should come from Braj and come to uh, Mathura so that I can do the sacred se thread ceremony for my sons. So when the residents of Vrindavan heard this, they were very heartbroken, especially Rohini herself. Why? Because Rohini is so close to Yashoda. And Yashoda has lost her son. Rohini's also lost her son. But they both think that Krishna and Balaram are we're the mothers of both Krishna and Balaram. Equal. Both have such love like that. So then Rohini was thinking, oh, on the one hand, I cannot disobey the request of my husband to go to Mathura. I cannot disobey. I have to go. But on the other hand, how can I leave? Hmm? Yashoda, the other mother of these, we are, we are like uh, one body, uh, two bodies, but with one soul, one pran. Hmm? And Rohini was praying, she was crying, O oh Lord Brahma, please make a copy of my body that can be sent there so I can still stay here with Yashoda. If you do this, then the problem could be solved. So Mother Yashoda is very, very kind. 
And she came to Rohini Maya and saw her crying. And she said, Oh my dear sister, you and I, we are like one soul. So I cannot go, I cannot stay here. But if you will go and see our sons Krishna and Balaram, then I will feel relief because you, you and I are like one soul. So at least if you will go and see them, huh, then I can have some relief from this separation. So then, on the request of Madhya Shoda Rohini, she had the strength, the courage to leave Vrindavan. So they checked with the Brahmanas and the Brahmanas made astrological chart to find the auspicious time to leave. <laughs> and with great respect, they put Rohini Maya on a bullock cart and Madhya Shoda cooks many nice preparations, delicious things that Krishna liked to eat and she packed it all up in a, in a tiffin and gave it to, also to Rohini to take there to Mathura. And all the bridge buses came out and when Rohini was leaving, they were following her. For, some, for a long distance they followed her until finally they could go no further and they just waved goodbye with tears in their eyes. And now Rohini was, had left the branch. When Rohini Maya arrived in Mathura, Krishna and Balaram saw her and they fell at her feet and gave pranams. And at that moment a very wonderful thing happened. As soon as they bowed down at the feet of Rohini Maya, in the heart of Krishna and Balaram, they had a sporty, a vision uh, of the lotus feet of Yashoda. And they saw that Yashoda was standing there smiling. And when Rohini was embracing them, they experienced that Madhya Yashoda was also embracing them. Hmm. Uh, why? Because this is the Aprakrita Sabhav, the supernatural nature of brain the supernatural nature of love. Hmm? That if someone loves uh, someone else, a transcendental person, by associating with them, you can feel the presence of the person they love. Hmm? I have seen this experience just like this in my life. I remember in about uh, 1997, it was the first day of Kartik, the month of Kartik. And that day is also the disappearance day of our Param Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami, my, my Guru's Guru. So my Guru Dev, he was sitting on the asan, and this asan big for several persons to sit in the first day of Kartik, on the disappearance day of his Guru. And the Kirtan was going on, and at that time early in the morning, from very far away, a few thousand kilometers away in Bengal, Gurudev senior god brother Param Pujapad Srila Bhaktivedanta Trivikram Maharaj hmm, who when Gurudev was only in his twenties uh, you trained him and taught him so many things when he first came to the Mart and was under the guidance of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshmaj and now my Gurudev was at about maybe 77 years old Srila Trivikram Maharaj was maybe 80 years old or more and he just arrived from Bengal and he came walking into the temple room with a stick. Uh, and the two old, very senior god brothers who love each other so much, uh, he came and came on the Vyasasana and they gave pranam to each other. And they were both crying. Uh, so at that time I could not understand why they're both crying. I thought they love each other so much. Uh, that is true. But now I understand. When Gurudev so see the Trivikram Maharaj and they bowed down to each other and looked in each other's eyes. Then they were both having a sporty of Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav mm. huh? huh? they were They were having a vision in their heart of their own Guru. They were remembering uh, whatever 50 years before how they were living together as young men and serving their spiritual master so many years ago. Huh? So because when you see someone who has love for Krishna or Guru, and you bow down to them, then you can experience the, who is beloved of them. Huh? This is how we become connected to our Prampara. Hmm. So in this way, Krishna and Balaram, they bowed down uh, to Rohini, and Rohini embraced them. And they all felt the presence of the love of Madhya Shoda. Hmm. 
So then Vasudeva and Devaki came and other ladies of Mathura and, uh, and uh, Rohini. She was talking about Vrindavan, talking about Vrindavan. Uh, but Devaki, she was a little bit insecure. She was upset because she's thinking, Krishna's my son. Why did you talk? Don't talk about Vrindavan now. That's over. That coward boy stuff. That was all in the past. He's my son and he's a warrior. He's from the royal family. Uh, he's from the royal family of Mathura. Mm-hmm. So she didn't say anything but the look on her face. The other ladies in the palace could understand that this talk of Vrindavan was, uh, it was making her feel insecure. So then the ladies of the palace, they said to Rohini, Oh, you're always talking about Vrindavan because you are very greedy to taste that fresh makan, that fresh butter mm-hmm. from the dairy farm. Mm-hmm. And so then uh, Rohini could understand they were giving in a subtle way a hint to her. Much. Don't talk about this around Vasudeva and David. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. These, are, uh, these are cultured people. They know how to say the right things without saying also. So then, now Balaram's mother was here, Vasudev Maharaj could organize the sacred thread ceremony of Krishna and Balaram. But Krishna was now in a dilemma. Because the father is always feeling, oh, when my son grows up, <laughs> he was waiting. When Krishna will be 12, then I'll organize his sacred thread ceremony and I'll be so proud now he's doing his spiritual education. But that opportunity, that loving opportunity to exchange with his son, huh? it was a stolen from Nanda Maharaj. And Krishna was very fully aware of this. I think, how will my father feel? But there's another thing. Because Krishna was not yet 11 and he was taking the sacred thread that means he was taking the thread according to the vidi, the rules and regulations of the royal family, of the Katriya caste, the warrior caste. Which means that it doesn't mean he's only starting in his education. It means that Krishna is changing his caste. And, gi- and it means that Krishna is moving from his family in Vrindavan and now he's integrated into that. It's like cutting with his past. So Krishna was very aware of how painful this must be. So then Krishna, he wrote a secret letter to Nanda Maharaj and sent it with a messenger. So that messenger went to Vrindavan and Nanda Maharaj read the letter. Oh Papa, just to protect the Yadu dynasty, I have to externally go through with this, but I'm not changing. On the outside, I'm going to act like I'm now starting my education in the royal family. But inside, I'm a gop, I'm a coward boy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I am your son. But I'm just pretending like this now for the protection of the others. So my dear father, I ask you to do one thing. On that day of my sacred thread ceremony, please make a sacred thread ceremony at the same time in Vrindavan for my friends <laughs> hmm? for Sri Dham and the other Sakas for the coward boys because my friends in Vrindavan they are so close to me they are practically me they are just like me and you should arrange the ceremony for them and when they receive the thread according to the rules of the coward boys huh, then I will be in Vrindavan and I will be saying all the mantras, but I'm not saying the mantras to the priest in Mathura, Gaga, Charya. I'm saying the mantras to the priest in Vrindavan, Bhaguri Rishi. Huh? You see? In Mathura, the priest will say, now repeat after me, Om Bharam. Make a vow. You will not sleep during the day. Om Bharam. Om Karma Karu. I will do my duty in the, in the ceremony. There's, you have to, the priest asks you questions and you have to make vows. So Krishna said hmm, that Gargacharya in Mathura, Vasudev Maharaj priest, he'll ask the questions, but I'll be answering to Bhaguri Rishi in Vrindavan. So then Nanda Maharaj by this he was somewhat pacified. So now Krishna and Balaram, they had to shave their head 
and in the ceremony they were given the sacred thread and Danda Gurudev used to say balance, Danda was very straight, but Krishna's Danda was a bit crooked. <laughs> <laughs> because everything about Krishna is crooked. <laughs> the tree Bangi. Ah, he stands in the yeah. <laughs> So, uh, the only, and then after initiation, the new initiates, they have to take their cloths and they have to first beg from mother or female, any female, or Bhavati Bhiksham Dehi, oh respectable lady, please give me alms. And then they, after that, they have to go to male persons, Bhavan Bhiksham Dehi, oh respectable sir, please give me alms. So Madhi Yashoda had said to uh, Krishna, oh, when you get your sacred thread ceremony, then come to me and I'll fill your cloth with jewels. But now he was, Madhi Yashoda was not there. And when it was time, his guru told him, now you have to beg Bhag Bhavati Bhiksham Dehi. He was looking around for Madhi Yashoda. And said, oh my yeah, my yeah. and Devaki was standing right next to him. And Devaki was saying, I'm your mother, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. But Krishna wasn't looking at her and weeping, oh my yeah, my yeah. And he was remembering his mother and Krishna fainted and became unconscious. <laughs> so then Basudeva and Devaki they became even more insecure. Huh? Will he stay with us? Or will he, perhaps he will run away. After the initiation, Krishna and Balaram was thinking, okay, now we have to go to Gurukul. But if there are many great sages like Vyasadev, like Narad, we could go and study from them. But the problem is this, they are Vaishnavas. That means they know that we are the incarnations of God. We are the incarnations of the Supreme Lord. So how can they play the role of our Guru? They'll think, what can I teach to them? They can teach me. So Krishna and Bharam decided, we'll not go to Narada or Vyasadev. And he said, we should go to a Shivite. Uh, a Shivite who is wor worshipping Lord Shiva, he'll not recognize who we are. So they were thinking, there was one great Shivite who is realized in Brahman, the light of Brahman. Mm -hmm. He's a, a Brahma Vadi. And his name is Sandipani Muni. Oh. He's from Kashi, Banares. But he had gone and done uh, austerities in Prabhas on the west coast. And then he had made his ashram, his Gurukul, where he was teaching so many Brahmin boys in Avantipur. So Krishna and Balaram decided we should go and study there because we'll be incognito. He won't recognize us. No one will know who we are. Also, Avantipur is quite far away. So we don't want anyone in Vrindavan <coughs> to know that we've gone all the way to Avantipur because they'll be very worried about us. So we'll hide the fact that we're going to Gurukul. So then Krishna and Bharam, they made an announcement in Mathura. Now we've received the Brahma Gayatri. We want to do Purascharana of the mantra. So Purascharana is a vow where you chant the mantra thousands and thousands of times and do some yagyas and so on. Uh, to make a strong relationship with that mantra. So they announced, we're doing privately Purascharana in our palace, so you won't see us for a couple of months. So then Krishna and Balaram, they went into their room and everyone expected that they would not see them for a few months now because they're doing this Purascharana of their mantra. And then secretly, Krishna and Balaram, they disappeared in the night from Mathura and they set out on foot to Avantipur. Why? Because now they're brahmacharis. That means celibate students. So those who are in that ashram of celibate students, brahmacharis, they're not allowed to use a vehicle. So they set off on foot and they walked, they were walking all the way to Avantipur. Quite far. I mean, for walking, it's really far. So, as Krishna and Balaram, they were walking on their way to Avantipur. They passed through many cowherd villages. And they saw the cows there and cowherd boys and cowherd girls as well. And they were reminded of Vrindavan. Oh, they were feeling separation from Vrindavan. Sometimes the, some of the cowherd girls in the village would see these two handsome boys walking by. And they would just be struck by their beauty. And openly speaking to their friends. Oh, look at those boys. 
when they finish their brahmachari ashram, then some woman is going to be very, very fortunate. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> they were saying, and Krishna overheard. And when Krishna heard it, he was very happy. And then the next moment he covered his ears. Oh, Sri Vishnu, Shri, I'm a brahmachari now. I can't listen to that. <laughs> So Krishna quickly covered his ears and ran away from there. So they kept going and finally they arrived in Avantipur. There Sandipani Muni was sitting on the asana, surrounded by so many Brahmin boys all studying from him. When Krishna and Balam arrived, they looked so beautiful. They're carrying their staffs. They're dressed in two pieces of, two pieces of silk and with a deer skin around the waist and a belt of uh, kush grass. So, they came there and they looked so beautiful. But all the Brahmin boys, they didn't get up. They didn't get up to respect them. Why? Because they could see by their demeanor that they had come from a warrior, warrior from a royal family. So Brahmins, they don't have to bow to the royal royalty. The royalty have to bow to the Brahmanas, to the priestly caste. So the boys didn't get up. But they were very amazed by the beauty of this, these two boys, one who was very, very fair and one who was very dark, dark complexion, like a fresh rain cloud. So Krishna and Bharam came carrying firewood in their hands. Hmm? Hmm? The Vedas say that Tadvigyana tam sagurume bhabhigachet. If you want to get transcendental knowledge, then you must approach a spiritual master carrying wood for the fire sacrifice. That means what the Guru needs to perform his spiritual practices, <laughs> you should assist in that. So in those days, the uh, Sandipani Muni was doing yagya, fire yagya every day. So Krishna Bhagavan <coughs> came with the wood and they put it down at his feet and they bowed down to him. And Krishna Bhagavan both prayed, O oh Master, you are an ocean of divine knowledge. Please save us from this endless pain of birth and death in the material world. Huh? This is how you approach Guru. Huh? If you don't approach Guru, uh, Hi, how are you doing Guruji? <laughs> <laughs> so we hang out together. No, you have to see that all the power of God is coming through the spiritual master and he gives us transcendental knowledge and guides us to come out from this terrible place of being born and dying again and again in an endless cycle of reincarnation. It's like being in a fire. Samsara dava nalali daloka tarnaya karna ganaganato. So with great humility, Krishna and Balaram approached Sandipani Muni bowing down and praying to him. When Sandipani Muni saw these beautiful boys, he said, the time for study in life is very rare. So I must keep you here with me for a long time and give you the full education. Mm -hmm. So you can see, maybe you can see in your own life uh, that that time where you were just doing your education, focusing only on learning, hmm, how long was it? Uh, compared to your whole life, not very long. Yeah. You know, to really learn subject deeply, you have to just do that, right? So that time in your life, which is for education, is extremely, extremely valuable. So Sandipani Muni said, stay with me, I accept you. And Krishna and Balaram were welcomed into the ashram. He said, who are you? What is your Varna? And so they said, your Gautra. They said, we are, and Balaram said, I am fair Yadu. Krishna said, I am the dark Yadu. Mm -hmm. So no one called them Krishna and Balaram. They called them by their dynasty, the Yadu dynasty, fair Yadu and, mm -hmm. and dark Yadu. That's all. No one knew. They were completely anonymous there. So when one comes to the Ashram of Guru, now you have to just engage in menial service. So the Guru used to send them out begging, door to door. And when the boys would go out begging, they would collect it and Krishna Balaram would carry everything. They like to carry. Uh, because Namo Brahmanya Devaya, Go Brahmanita. The Brahmins are very dear to Krishna. 
So they were carrying the things that their god brothers were collecting. And also, when Krishna and Bharam, they would come to the door of a householder, and they didn't need to ask for anything. As soon as some householder saw these boys coming, their hearts would just melt and immediately just get things and just give <laughs> without asking. No need, big shamdai. Only everyone there was surrendering whatever they had to Krishna and Bharat. So they were collecting more than, than the others. One night, the wife of Sandipani Muni, she asked him, out of all of your disciples, who is the most devoted? Sandipani Muni said, oh, those two Kaktriya boys, they are the most devoted. She said, but I did not see them doing any seva. He said, oh, out of affection, I don't tell them to do anything in the ashram. But when I am not looking, when you are not looking also, they are always you know, finding some seva to do and serving, not in an ostent ostentatious way. You know? If you want to grow in devotion, don't make a show of what you are doing. Just do it quietly. Peace. Krishna sees and Guru sees. Everyone doesn't have to see. So, Krishna and Balaram were serving so nicely and the Guru, Ma, Guru Mata, she had become aware of how devoted they were. So one day, uh, Guru Mata saw that, oh, it looks like it may rain soon and we're low in firewood. So if someone doesn't collect the firewood just now, then all the wood will be wet and then we won't have anything to burn. So Guru Mata came to the ashram and said to the boys, Oh, can someone go to the forest to collect wood? All the boys said, Oh, Guru Mata, the weather is so, it, there'll be a storm just now, we cannot go. But Krishna and Balaram overheard and without saying anything, they quickly got up and they went. They're so dedicated to serving Guru and Guru Mata. So Krishna and Balaram went out into the forest and they were collecting wood. But before they knew it, it was like a storm like the other day. Mm -hmm. right? You tried to go to the program, but you couldn't go because all the roads were flooded. Mm -hmm. So there was a big storm suddenly and Krishna and Balaram got stranded in the forest. There was water everywhere and they couldn't get back to the ashram. And the whole night, they spent the whole night alone in the forest. In the morning, Sandipurna Muni got up. So where, where is the where is the light yellow and the dark yellow? Where are they? Huh? And then the other boys told him, Oh, Guru Mata requested someone to collect wood and he became upset with his wife. So why did you do that? And early in the morning, he set off. Hmm? And the waters had subsided and he was looking for them in the forest. And he found Krishna and Balaram there soaking wet. But with the other boys came and they were laughing with them. Oh, no problem. We, were, we spent the night in the forest. Uh, and when Sandeep Panimuni saw that they had forsaken their own comfort, forsaken their own luxury, forsaken their own um, physical happiness for the sake of seva, doing service to please their spiritual master. Um, then Sandeep Panimuni was so pleased and he embraced Krishna and Balaram and he blessed them. Bangalam Bhavatu. May all knowledge appear, transcendental knowledge appear in your heart. You see. So Krishna, he always thinks that throughout his life, Krishna always thought, whatever success was there in my life, it was only because my Gurudev blessed me. This is a fact. This is a fact. If there's any auspiciousness in your life, you have Sadhu Sangha. You have the opportunity to live in the Holy Dharma. You are doing sadhana every day. How does it happen? Yeah. When a pure Vaishnava blesses us, it changes, all our karma is changed, completely finished. We become freed from the bondage of our destiny and lifted onto a transcendental path which is taking us to the spiritual world. Only by Guru Kripa and Vaishnava Kripa. Yeah. So, <coughs> Krishna himself said, Nahami jam prajati byam tapaso pasame nacha chusse yam sabhutatma guru shusru srayo yata. Krishna said, I am not so pleased by the performance of sacrifices. I am not so pleased by the acceptance of the sacred thread. I am not so pleased by the performance of austerities. 
I am not so pleased by taking sannyas hmm? as I am pleased Guru Sru Sru Sayayata by that person who listens very carefully to the teachings of his spiritual master and follows them in his life and serves Guru like in a very humble very humble way I am pleased by that person so actually this verse has two levels of meaning because you can have a Guru on the path of karma and you can have a Guru on the path of bhakti uh -huh. so if you have a Guru on the path of karma then naham ijya means the performance of sacrifices because in karma you have to do Brahmins have to do sacrifices every day and uh, that is the duty of grihasta householders prajati byam means uh, receiving the sacred thread that's the duty of brahmacharis hmm? tapasa that is the duty of vanaprastas and uh, upasamenacha that is the controlling the senses and becoming detached from everything that's the duty of sannyasis so krishna is saying i am not so um, pleased by the performance of all these duties in vanasharam dharmya of celibate students, householders, retired persons, and sannyasis. That's the analysis of the verse according to karma, the path of karma. Mm. But according to the path of bhakti, naham ija means, Krishna is saying, I am not as pleased by the person who is serving the deity. We serve the deity, it's good. But there's something that can please Krishna more than serving the deity. Don't we do it? Naham ija prajati vyam. That means, now, uh, remembering the Gayatri mantras. We have to do it. Huh? But Krishna said, I am not as pleased by that as. And then tapasa. Tapasa means focusing your mind, concentrating your mind, doing dhyan, meditation. Hmm? And then upasamenava cha means actually being in samadhi, in trance. And being in the trance of praying, love for God and actually serving Krishna in your spiritual form. Krishna said, I am not as pleased by that person who in trance is serving me as I am pleased by that person who is humbly serving his Guru. That's the meaning of the verse according from to Bhakti Marg, the path of Bhakti. Huh? So, um, Sri Dasrami has given this explanation on this verse and he said another wonderful thing. He said that the service to the spiritual master is completely swatantra. It's an independent anga of bhakti yoga. You see, there are so many angas of bhakti yoga you can do hearing, chanting, remembering, doing puja, going on parakrama, um, studying the shastras, and so on, building temples. And there are all different kinds of things that you can do, different angas of bhakti, serving tulsi. Hmm. But, All of these angas of bhakti are dependent on pleasing the spiritual master. But serving the spiritual master is not dependent on any anger of bhakti at all. Mm -hmm. That means if someone can just give their life in the service of guru, diksha guru, shiksha guru, pure Vaishnavas, if someone can give their life in the service of guru, then they can attain all perfection, even if they don't do the other practices of bhakti. That's astonishing. Huh? And many people say, no, 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 no. Because sometimes a person has an ego, I have to do my meditation. Of course you do. But if you're thinking that only by your own meditation and practice that you'll become perfect, not going to happen. And you may think someone who's working very hard and serving their guru, that he's not qualified to meditate like me. No, this is wrong. By service to guru seva, then you can get all siddhi, all perfection, all praying. So the best thing is this, that you should not think that uh, there are many different practices of bhakti and serving guru is one of them. You should think that serving guru is everything and all my hearing, chanting and meditation and service to the deity, that is all parts of my guru seva. Uh, so service of the spiritual master is the main thing and everything else is just parts of that. That means guru seva is angi, and all the other practices are angas of that, uh, the parts of that. So Krishna has shown this in his own life. Hey Jai, what's up? See. <laughs> Can you hear? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Now, I want to tell something that is a little secret about Krishna's life in Gurukul. The brahmacharis are sleeping on the ground, sleeping on the floor, in the ashram. So at night, the older students would go to take rest. And Krishna and Balaram would lie down on the ground at night. But they could not sleep. Why? They're remembering Vrindavan. They're just lying there awake at night. Krishna said, Oh my, yeah. oh my dear brother Balaram, I am trying to remember Mathura and our family in Mathura to forget the residence of Vrindavan, but it's impossible. When I try to think of Basudev Maharaj, but then I see Nanda Maharaj in my heart. When I try to think of Devaki, then I remember Yashoda. <laughs> when I try to think of the other young princes of the royal family in Mathura, then I remember Subal, Sridha, Madhu Mangal and others. What can he do? <laughs> Balaram said, Oh Kanaya, <laughs> it's true. I also feel like that. Sometimes I feel like just giving up everything and running away to Vrindavan. But we have to make our hearts steady. But I have such an experience that when I close my eyes and I talk to Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda, then I see them in my heart and it's real. Krishna said, Oh, but yeah, it's true. I have that experience too. It's real. It's not a memory. It's not imagination. By feelings of separation, one actually associates with the Krishna and Nanda and Yashoda, the residents of Vrindavan, by the, the feeling of separation. And Krishna and Balaram, two brothers embraced each other and they were crying. And they both cried themselves to sleep. <laughs> this is Krishna's life in the ashram. <laughs> so when Krishna was asleep, he fell asleep and he saw that he was in Vrindavan. And Rasalila was going on. Hey. Rasalila was going on. Krishna saw how he was playing the flute and by the sound of his, his flute was calling all Braja Gopis. Huh? Gopis came running in the middle of the night there to meet with him and see Krishna was uh, dancing with them. Shukadev Goswami part he says Evam Parisvanga Karabi Marsha Snake Dekshana Uddhama Vilasahasai Rame Rame Show Braja Sundari B Yatava Kaswa Prati Bib Bimba Vibramaha Evam Pariswanga. See, Krishna is putting his arm around Braj Gopis, Karaba, uh, Kara Abhi Marsha, and touching the beautiful bodies of Braj Gopis with his hand. How? Sometimes they're singing songs together. Hmm? So you know when we sing, we do kirtan. There's some... <coughs> like that, there's some... Some... Uh, tal, some tal, some bones. And so when Krishna is singing, he puts his arm around Radhika and he's playing the tal on her chest. Like this. This kariba, karabimar shaha. Evan parisanga. And so he's singing. Ah, and when it comes to the end of the, it's called the sum, you know, because there'll be so many beats to the bar, yeah. and it goes up, and when it comes to the end of the sum, then, <laughs> hey, like that. And so, so Krishna's singing, and when it comes to the sum, then he's playing the tihe on the chest of Radhika, like this. So, evam parisanga karabi marsha, and sneak dekshana, and he's glancing with so much affection 
at the beauty of Shimati Radhika and the beauty of the Braj Gopis. Vilas ahas, vilas. Oh, if we'll discuss the meaning of the word vilas, it will take all night. So I just want to make sure. Vilas, how they play together. Actually, when a person has lust, then they have very eagerness. They feel great eagerness to consummate that relationship. But when love is there, the vilas, that means only playing together. This is actually more uh, joy, more pleasing than anything. Vilas ahasai. So, vilas means, such as, if Radhika will sing very beautifully, <coughs> just like in a theater when someone does a beautiful performance, then at the end, then someone will come represent to the audience and present a bouquet. Yeah? Or uh, they will throw flowers onto the stage, like that. So when Radhika is singing and dancing, then Krishna, as a paratoshika reward for her performance, he would come and give her a kiss. Yeah? Like this. <laughs> so, Snigdekshana Uddham Vilas Ahasai. And he, Krishna was smiling and laughing. Rame, uh, Rame, Rame, so Krishna is Ramesh. Ramesh means the Lord of Rama, Lakshmi Devi. But Bhagavan, the Supreme Lord, has given Aishwarya opulences to Lakshmi Devi. But he has not given her the opulences of Prem. Mm. Uh -huh. This is what? Why does Lord Narayan not dance in Rasalila in Vaikuntha? You know why? Because of the different ingredients of rasa, dancing is an anubhav. In other words, when you have a feeling, yeah, I feel like dancing. When you have a feeling, then you dance. So the reason that Krishna dances in the rasa lila, in Brindavan with gopis, but he doesn't dance in the form of uh, Narayan in Vaikuntha, he doesn't even do rasa lila in Mathura or Dwarka. Mm. Oh, why? Because they don't have such love there. It's the love of the gopis that gives Krishna feeling. I want to dance. And that's why the Raslila is only in Vrindavan. Hmm? So, he, he's Ramesh. He's the, he's the Lord of Rama. But here Rama does not mean Rama Lakshmi Devi. It means Radhika herself. Millions and millions of Lakshmis are, have expanded from Radharani. So, Rame Rame Isho Brajasundri meaning and each and every gopi of Vrindavan is Brajasundri. Sundri means beautiful. Each and every coward girl in the village of Vrindavan is more beautiful than the Lakshmis of Vaikuntha. Hmm. Hmm? So, Yathabaka Swapati Bimba Vibrama. Shukadev Goswami said that Krishna was like, Yatarbaka means like a child. Prati Bimba means a reflection, Vibrama, bewildered. Hmm? Bhavama Thakur wrote one poem. He said, when Krishna was a little baby, he went into the storeroom to steal some butter. But as he was stealing, he looked up and there was a pillar of jewels there and his own reflection was in the jewels. But being a child, he didn't know and he thought it was another boy in the storeroom. <laughs> <laughs> so he looked and, who's that very attractive person? <laughs> and then he thought, oh, I'm stealing. What if he tells my mother? <laughs> so then Krishna said to the boy, listen, I've saved some for you. So if you don't tell my mother, I'll give some to you too. Shh! <laughs> so when Krishna was a little baby, he was yat, uh, He was bewildered by his own reflection. Now Shukadev Goswami is saying, when Krishna is enjoying loving pastimes in the beautiful flowering bowers, the kunjas, on the bank of Jamuna River in the forest of Vrindavan, then Krishna is Yatabakaswa Pratibimba Vibrama, bewildered like a child, playing with his own reflection. So what does that mean? Hmm? It has many, many layers of meaning. So we'll just touch on a few of them. Hmm. The first meaning is this, that if you have a reflection, that reflection is not another person. It's you, right? So in the same way, when Krishna is having loving pastimes with Radhika, Radhika is not another person. She's Krishna's own Shakti. Krishna's power, Shakti of love has manifest in this beautiful form of Radha. And, but he's thinking, oh, this is a beautiful coward girl, the daughter of Prishubhanu Maharaj. So he's thinking she's someone else. But ontologically, metaphysically, philosophically, 
According to Tattva, Radha Krishna Aichi Sada Ekahi Swarup, Lila Ras Ashwadite Dare Dwerup. Radha Krishna are one Swarup, but they have two bodies to relish Rasa. Mm. So, Yataba Kaswa Patibimba Viprama. Then another thing, if you have a mirror here, you see your reflection. If there's another one, use another. Mm. So, for every mirror, there's a reflection. So, that means that in the Rasa Lila, for every gopi who was there, there was a Krishna. Krishna manifested many forms to have loving pastimes with each and every beautiful coward girl of Braja. So, Yatava Kaswa Patibimba Vibramaha. Another meaning. It means that when they were singing together, Krishna would sing one thing, and then exactly the same Radhika would sing, repeating after him. It's when we just sing Maha Mantra. In a simple tune, it's easy. I can sing, then you can sing. Huh? But they will sing very, very beautiful rag and tal, very complicated and artistic and difficult. But somehow or other, Radhika could always repeat what Krishna was saying. Upagiyamana udkhayan banita shatayutapa malam bibrad vaijyantim vyachanam mandanam banam shukunev Goswami is saying. Upagiyamana udkhayan. So, for example, Krishna would sing. Hmm? Ya mini krita ruchi suchi kantis chandrita vali bibba vikata sri sat shatpadali lalita kalagita pasyabati kamudakara esha. And then gopis would just repeat. <laughs> they would sing exactly the same but just change. They just change two letters. Instead of ya mini krita ruchi suchi kantis, they say. Kamini Kutta Ruchi Suchi Kantis. And then instead of saying Shatpadali, they say Satpadali. The S goes from Sh to S. There are three S's in Sanskrit. Sh, Sh, Sh. Three S's. So they just change one S from Sh to S. And now the whole meaning. The meaning of Krishna's words is. Oh, just see, this night is so beautiful with the rays of the moon illuminating the crystal clear lakes which are filled with blossoming lotus flowers and the bumblebees humming. How beautiful is the atmosphere of this night? And then Braj Gopis, they change the word Yamini means night, they change to Kamini. Uh -huh. hmm? <laughs> yeah? And they change the word Shatpada means who has six legs, that's bumblebees. The bumblebees, the six-legged bumblebees are, are singing and making a mm, beautiful atmosphere. Hmm? So, gopis change Shatpada to Satpada. Sat means uh, beautiful or perfect. And Pada means a line of poetry. So now the whole song is changed. Gopis are singing exactly the same, but Krishna is glorifying the forest. And gopis are so in love with Krishna, they just tweak it a little bit and it becomes glorification of Krishna. Mm. Oh, Krishna is so beautiful and he's singing on this moonlit night the most choice words of poetry. Huh? And Krishna sings, he's, um, Krishna is amazed. Mm. And, oh, Yathabhakaswa Pratibhimba Bribhama, Radha and Krishna, they're like a child playing it with his reflection means that as they see each other, as they're embracing each other, as they're caressing each other, they each one knows exactly what is the desire of the other and the other knows the desire of the other. Joy joy hi pyaro kare soy moe pave pave moe joy there's a beautiful song Radhika is telling her Saki oh everything Krishna does I like and everything I like Krishna does <laughs> <laughs> because their hearts have become one like person and their reflection mm -hmm. hmm? so oh another meaning just as without a mirror you cannot see your own beauty so Krishna cannot understand his own beauty without looking at Radhika. When Krishna smiles, when Krishna sings, when Krishna dances, and Radhika's eyes go, go very big, 
And she smiles and Krishna can see the joy on the face of Radhika. Then Krishna understands. I think that she's very beautiful, but by her reaction I can understand that she, I'm also beautiful. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> you cannot know how beautiful you are until you see that others are appreciating your beauty. So when Krishna sees Radhika's response to his beauty, his charming activities, then Krishna himself realizes, I'm also beautiful. She's very attractive to me. So yatabhakaswa pratibhimba vibramaha Many meanings. So see Krishna, in his, he's lying, he's a brahmachari now, lying on the ground in Gurudev's ashram. He cried himself to sleep in the arms of his brother, and now he's dreaming. I am in Vrindavan, Ras Leela is going on, so beautiful. Hmm? And he saw how, at the end of the Ras Leela, then Krishna is perspiring, gopis are perspiring, the cosmetics on the bodies of gopis are smeared on the, on the garlands of Krishna. His garlands are crushed and smeared with the kumkum from the breast of Raja gopis. And Krishna thinks, oh, I should, they're tired now, I should refresh them. Let's do the Jal Kali, playing in the cool, refreshing water of Jamuna. Tabi yutas ramapo itam anga sanga Gristas rajaswa kucha kumkum ranjitaya Gandava pali be anudata avi sadva Srantoga jiba ibaradi va binna setuhu Shukadev Goswami is describing how Sri Krishna to um, give relief to Braj Gopis led them to the bank of Jamuna and then holding hands they entered into the cooling waters and the cosmetics of Braj Gopis was on the body of Krishna Krishna's cosmetics was on the body of Braj Gopis and as they entered into the water the water was touching their bodies and dissolving the sandalwood paste, the kumkum, the kasturi all the fragrances were floating in the water and the bumblebees uh, because of the fragrance of the garland of Krishna and the kumkum of Braj Gopis swarms of bumblebees were following them just as wherever the Supreme Lord goes, he's followed by the uh, Gandharvas. Mm? Or Krishna is like the king of elephants. When a king of elephants with his female mates comes to the bank of the river, he's so heavy, he just breaks the banks, the sand banks break. That means Krishna is like an ele elephant because he's breaking all the rules of Dharma mm. in the Rasalila. Mm? And when an elephant is in rut, then from their temples come the um, one type of uh, fragrance got, drips from the temples of a strong elephant in rut and the bumblebees are very attracted to this as well so they follow so in this way Krishna is like the king of elephants enjoying in the river with his mates the example of elephants is given Rupa Goswami uses this example because when an elephant plays with his mates they're so absorbed, they're in avesh, completely absorbed in that happiness, in that pleasure. They don't care for, for anything. So in this way, Radha Krishna and the gopis were going into the river and followed by the bumblebees. But you should know that when Shukadeva Goswami mentions bumblebees in the, in the Bhagavatam, it has this also a special meaning. Krishna Deva Bhavantam Vande Amanamana Samarukaram Arpaya Nijapada Pankajamakarande Rupa Goswami said, May my heart become like a bumblebee, relishing the nectar of your lotus feet, Krishna. So the manjuris, that those are the young maidservants of Radha and Krishna. They don't go into the water, they stay on the bank with some towels and some fresh clothes for changing it. Uh, actually, when Radha Krishna come out from the water, they don't dress them in clothes made of cloth. They dress them in garments made of flowers. Mm. Pushpavesh. <gasps> <laughs> uh, can you imagine just being dressed yeah. in a in like a bikini made of flowers? <laughs> <laughs> then with or the flower sure. Yeah, yeah, that comes later. <laughs> yeah? You must have heard about this in your previous life. No, yeah, yeah, the bed sheets made of flowers. Yeah, that comes later. So. So the, the manjuris, the maidservants, they don't go into the water for the pastimes. They stay on the shore and they prepare everything for the next pastimes. So why are the manjuris are described in poetry as bumblebees? Why? Because when they see Radha Krishna playing in the water, then they go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All the manjuris are, hmm. <laughs> They're proving so much. Eh? And they can, because 
Whatever Radhika is experiencing in her meeting with Krishna, the feelings of Radhika are inflected, reflected in them. You know, when you eat something very tasty, you go, mmm. <laughs> so the manjus, because they're tasting the love of Radha Krishna, mmm. So they're like a bum movie. So see Krishna, he was asleep, and then suddenly the morning was coming, and Krishna woke up. <gasps> and then, oh. I thought that I was in Brindavan. Mm -hmm. I thought that I was with my sweetheart Radhika. But I am here very far away in the Gurukul and now I'm a Brahmachari. So then Krishna sat up and then when he breathed, he could smell the perfume of Radhika. His body was mm -hmm. become fragrant with the kumkum, the perfume of Radhika. So then he could understand it was not a dream. It was real. And then Krishna thought, oh no, what if the other brahmacharis, they smell this? Hmm? I'm supposed to be now in mm -hmm. celibate students and not associating with any ladies. Alas, alas, now my vow of brahmacharya has been broken. And Krishna lamented. Then he thought, oh, but I didn't do it deliberately. So it should be all right. Hmm? It was not my intention. I was just taking rest. So... It's not, I have not broken the brahmacharya, actually. So, in this way, Krishna from his own life, he showed us the importance of taking shelter of Guru and serving Guru. And in, by this, our entire life becomes successful. And in the meantime, you should know that every pastime of Krishna, whether it's in Vrindavan, or whether he's far away in Ujjain, in the Gurukul of Sandipani Muni, one thing is true. Krishna never forgets Radha. Never. Ne Krishna is called Urukram, a hero who performs Herculean feats. But the greatest heroic deed that Krishna does is that he never forgets Radha. You can go now. <laughs> I just want to well, uh, just say how this pastime clear up. You know, I always want to have a relationship with Srimati Radharani ah. because everybody talks about Radha, Radha, Radha. But I find it hard to just worship her alone. And so in this pastime, now I understand. How can you worship her alone? Not alone. Always it's impossible. Radha right? Krishna together. But with the focus on Radhika. Srila Bhakti Nauta Kora said, um, <coughs> Si Radha Rasuke Krishna Yesuka means that Srila Bhakti Nauta Kora is absorbed in the mood of Kamala Manjari, one maidservant. And mm -hmm. she's saying that I know that Krishna's happiness lies entirely in Radhika's happiness. Mm -hmm. And therefore I will just serve her and I'll never independently go to Krishna myself. But by serving her, this is the best service I can also do to Krishna mm -hmm. as well. So this is the, the Manjuris have love for Radha Krishna both, but somewhat more leaning towards Shimati Radha. Mm -hmm. yes. I see. This is called Sambandha Gyan, knowledge of relationship. You yeah. see, so Guru gives Diksha Mantra. But to realize that relationship in the Diksha Mantra, it's necessary to hear. It's an ongoing process. And we hear about the relationships of Radha Krishna and their maidservants. Gradually, gradually, it becomes clear to us, oh, this is where I want to be, in that mood. Mm -hmm. And then gradually, uh, when we, if we're hearing and chanting in the Association of Pure Devotees, one day when you're remembering your Gayatri Mantras, then Vrindavan Yoga Pit will appear and Radha Krishna, Lalita and Vishaka, Rupa Manjari and Gurudev also. And Gurudev will take your hand and bring you and give you a chai. You take this chai and do some chai. Whatever is your seva, uh, Gurudev will give to you. Thank you, Lord. Okay.